Hey gang, this is Travis Miguel of Atreyu and we're creating madness with Madness to Creation. Welcome to the Madness to Creation podcast or self-care and music merch. This is Maddie. How are you? I wanted to release, uh, before I get into the next conversation, I want to release uh, kind of our tentative podcast schedule. Uh, we are ironing out a podcast schedule to make it consistent for the listeners and that way they know when each episode is going to be released. On Mondays, you can count on an interview. Tuesdays and Thursdays will be a review, kind of a reaction type of review type of show. Wednesday, we're going to make it into an absolutely fun show. We're going to call it Midweek Recharge, and we're going to talk about whether it's spirituality, whether it's just uh, funny things. We're going to highlight a little bit of comedy in the entertainment world, and we're also going to highlight like what how people react to music videos, uh, Twitter hashtags, so on and so forth. It's going to be called Midweek Recharge. And on Saturdays and Sundays, we are looking for... Uh, local and unsigned talent, so to speak. And um, basically what I want to highlight in terms of local and unsigned talent, make sure that they have a platform. Each episode will be available on starting on Saturday nights at 8 p.m. and on Sundays at 8 p.m. That is Central Standard Time. So in other words, it'd be 9 Eastern Time. So hopefully you can check us out on Spotify, Spreaker, SoundCloud, GeoSav, and YouTube, iHeartRadio, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, and Google Podcasts. And hopefully you also enjoyed the previous episode with Coleman Williams um, when he talked about Son of Sin, Nashville, and mental health. And, uh, and this next interview is an absolute delight for us. It will be released uh, on Friday. Uh, it is featuring one of my favorite guitarists. He's kind of un- one of the unsung heroes of the band of Trio, Travis Miguel. And Travis uh, basically has been there from the inception of the band. And a Trio is definitely heroes of mine. And um, what I like about Atreyu is that they're heavy, yet they're melodic, yet they talk about songs about rising to the occasion, going through obstacles, pushing through, and all that. And also, they, also they're, I will never forget seeing them live. When I saw them at the, on the Taste of Chaos Festival, which actually I'm also going to highlight as well, I'm um, looking back at Taste of Chaos, where Deftones headlined along with Thrice as LA Dying and other bands like that. I think Dredge was on there too, and it was one of the most memorable nights of music. And um, long story short about the trio set, I remember uh, some guy, uh, He was it was at the Roy Wilkins Auditorium in St. Paul, Minnesota, and basically it was a big floor area, but they also had a balcony. And um, I was with um, a friend of mine who had, uh, cer- who had cerebral palsy, and naturally we were in the handicap section, which was right below the balcony. Some drunk guy was headbanging so much, he fell from the balcony and broke his foot. Luckily, he did not land on his head or anything like that. And um, I basically missed half of the set because with me being certified in first aid and CPR, um, by regulations, by law, I had, to, I had to stop what I was doing and attend. I remember pushing through people and rushing as fast as I could um, to make sure that there was ice, make sure he wouldn't get up and all that stuff. And he was a big guy. I had to keep yelling him, get down stay down because his foot was bleeding. You could see a bone sticking out of his foot. That's how I knew it was broken. And so I missed half a tree who said, and you know what? It's no big deal. I, I help I help somebody receive medical attention. Some, and a lot of times it's more important. Uh, so in other words, when you're at shows, be mindful of other people. Um, I know that we are all excited to get back to concerts, get back to crowd surfing, headbanging, moshing, dancing, uh, clapping our hands, whatever it is that we do at concerts. Just be mindful of other people. Um, I know for a while, um, besides when I'm going to be in the photo pit area, I'm going to be in, the, in an area. I'm going to keep my social distance. I'm still going to wear a mask. And if you choose not to wear a mask, that is your choice. But please be vaccinated if you choose not to wear a mask. I mean, I'm not trying to virtue signal or anything like that. But you're talking to somebody who has a compromised immune system and stuff like that. And just it's just one of those things. We just In our society, we need to be mindful and considerate of others. And anyway, we talked a lot about uh, their record that was released entitled baptize and and we also talked about the live stream show we talked about mental health a great deal travis miguel was just an insightful he's a little bit shy but kind of insightful very much a gentleman to talk to and also he's just a wonderful guitarist uh and if you are a guitarist and happy to be some of across this podcast you will learn a lot about how atreyu puts it puts riffs together and how and what to and what nuances you can use in order to become a better guitarist. Travis M- Miguel offers some insightful tips. And follow Atreyu on social media. Also, please 
please support our artists and bands by um, checking out their album on all digital streaming platforms since it's available in music stores. Please buy it on vinyl or CD, wherever it may be available. And also, I'm going to have one more uh, tip for you. The music industry has lost over a billion dollars last year from the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Please, please, please take an extra $30 and buy a t-shirt, buy a few bumper stickers, buy a poster, buy a CD, buy a meet and greet pass, and help these bands out. Because of the, the nature of the music industry, bands don't make as much as they used to. So please, please, please support our bands and artists so we can continue enjoying going to concerts. And also with Madness Creation, we have decided as unless if it's a big arena show or if it's like a festival or whatever, we are not going to be asking for comp tickets. Uh, we'll be asking for photo passes, but we will not be asking for comp tickets um, because we want to do our part to make sure that we are keeping the music industry going. I mean, it may only be one or two tickets, but that's one or two tickets that the PR agents and, and, and band managers, tour managers, stuff like that, don't have to spend in order to get media. So it was, we just we just felt for our mental health, we want to get back to shows. And on that note, please enjoy this interview with Travis Miguel of Atreyu. And thank you so much for listening. And if you're listening, I love you. And even if you're not listening, I still love you anyways. Welcome to the Madness of Creation Podcast, where self-care and music merge. This is Maddie. How are you? Here I have with me is one amazing guitarist, Travis Miguel of of one of my favorite bands, Atreyu. Travis, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Awesome. So what's going on today? Anything exciting? Uh, not much. Uh, I just got my first uh, vaccination shot today. Um so my arm is a little sore, but uh, yeah, other than that, it's kind of just business as usual. Awesome. So how did it feel getting that first uh, vaccination shot? Um, did, did it feel like you're one step closer to get back playing in front of fans and stuff? Yeah, it's definitely a, uh, a good step forward. Um, you know, we've been in this mess now for over a year and it definitely feels good to uh, slowly but surely making our way out of it. Yeah. How much do you miss uh, playing in front of uh, people? Uh, I miss it quite a bit. Um, you know, I mean, that's, that's what, that's what we do. You know, that's our livelihood and uh, we haven't been able to do it now for uh, over a year. So um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're definitely looking forward to getting back out there and getting on a stage again. Definitely. And one thing I really enjoyed is um, it was about, couple months ago you guys did a live stream and uh you played uh, uh from uh, lead sales and paper anchors and stuff like that and um what was like some of your favorite memories from live streaming and um what adjustments did you have to make from live streaming as opposed to playing in front of people when you played that played that gig um well filming a live stream is a lot like filming a music video except it lasts way longer and it's only one take um but yeah i mean it was it was cool it was fun um there's actually a lot more work that went into it more than i had had uh, anticipated um and not that i'm complaining or anything because you know like i said we haven't been able to do anything for over a year so actually having something to do felt really good like actually having a purpose um but yeah the live stream went really really well um and it was um you know a good way to kind of, you know, keep our name out there and show people that we're not just like resting on our laurels or, laurels or just, um, you know, just kind of biding our time. Um, so yeah, like, like I said, with that being said, uh, it's definitely, definitely going to feel nice to actually get in front of people uh, and play music as opposed to like a live stream where you're literally just playing to a camera crew. Definitely. And what is like, what do you think like your first reaction is going to be? And what do you think the fans reaction is going to be when you guys hit that stage for the first time since COVID and everything like that? Do you think, think there's going to be more adrenaline than before? Or what do you think? I would, uh, I would assume so. Um, you know, I mean, the bands and the musicians and the artists are obviously, um, you know, raring to go and champing at the bit to get out there and play live music. But um, I think the general public and the 
the audience are just as ready, if not more ready for live music to come back. So um, I think once bands finally are able to get out there, it's going to be smiles all across the board. Definitely. And uh, one of my favorite memories from you guys from a personal level is uh, I checked you guys out when you guys were on the Taste of Chaos tour when Deftones headlined. Um, mm -hmm. It was the show up in at the Roy Wilkins Auditorium in St. Paul, Minnesota. And uh, do, you, do you guys remember that tour or anything like that? And how have you grown from back then in the Taste of Chaos tour to now with Brandon being the vocalist? Uh, I, I do remember that Able tour. Voice, I say. Uh, yeah, I remember that tour very well. It's, um, I think, collectively for all of us, it's, def it's definitely one of our favorite tours we've ever done. Um, you know, we, I mean, I myself am a lifelong Deftones fan. So getting to see them every night was just like, you know, it, it really doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, um, you know, Thrice was on the tour and we're from the same area as them. So, you know, it was really nice to have some kindred spirit, uh, kindred spirits out on the tour with us. And um, there was also story of the year as I lay dying uh, Dredge was on a few shows as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was just a big winter hangout fest. It was so much fun. Um, you know, as far as like how we've grown since then, I mean, that was uh, coming up on, actually, I think it was 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was 2006. So uh, right about this time of the year, actually, because, you know, it was during the winter because I remember it being so damn cold. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, since then, I mean, we've obviously had a, a lineup change, which uh, happened recently. But I mean, just in general, you know, I mean, we were 15 years younger then, and none of us were married. None of us had kids. None of us had mortgages to pay. Um, mm -hmm. So between then and now, I mean, we've all just kind of grown up as individuals. Yeah, absolutely. So you said when you grown up as individuals, what uh what are some things that you feel like you've grown up in like take take yourself from back in 2006 to to that to now what advice would you give to 2006 um um yeah. i would most likely tell myself that i am not invincible um you know when you're when you're in your 20s and you're in a touring band there's this definite sense of invincibility and I mean I think it goes with anybody who's at that age you know like uh, the world is your oyster and you know everything's in front of you and uh, nothing bad can happen right. um, not that anything tragic or terrible happened to any of us but it's just I'm, I don't know I think I'm just more aware and um, more realistic about um, how things can or cannot pan out yeah, definitely. And um, kind of to get into uh, your upcoming album, Baptized, which is due out June 4th via Spine Farm, Spine Farm Records, easy for me to say. Um, I really love the songs that you guys did. It, it almost feels like a rebirth, I want to say. I don't know if that's a correct term, but it just feels like just Atreyu is just back stronger than ever. I mean, you guys were actually a very strong band before. But um, the song Warrior really has spoken to me lately, uh, especially considering my personal life. So thank you guys for writing that song and everything like that. So um, I really related from a mental health perspective. Um, what, what do you get out of that song? And what did you learn from Travis Barker when he was featured in that uh, song? Um, well, kind of to touch on what you were saying before, as far as like a almost like a rebirth, that's essentially why the album was called Baptized um you know just like you said it's it's an it's a it's a really it's like we're being reborn again you know it's a it's a new lineup it's a new decade we have a new album coming out um even dan and myself our other guitar player and myself we got new guitars um <laughs> so yeah it's just it's like a kind of like a, a pseudo fresh start for us um and you know working with uh, Travis Barker, um, it kind of, well, John Feldman, our producer, um, he's essentially neighbors with Travis Barker. Oh, and nice. Tra Travis actually works out of uh, Feldman's studio quite a bit. He's there like 
like three or four times a week doing just random projects and stuff like that. So um, it kind of came time to, or we had the idea of uh, having like almost like a, uh, like a college football game, almost like marching drum kind of part. So we figured, well, who, who could we get to do this? Well, let's just, why don't we just get one of the most famous drummers on the planet <laughs> who, who just so happens to be our producer's neighbor. So it worked out really, really well. Um, you know, he just came in, laid it down real quick, hung out for a bit and you know, that was it. And um, yeah, it, it came out awesome. We're super, uh, super stoked on it. And the song itself is actually doing really well at a uh, radio and whatnot. So um, yeah, things are looking up. Yeah, how can um, people go about requesting uh, Warrior on the radio? Uh, I honestly don't know. Um, okay. <laughs> if you're talking like, you know, terrestrial radio, I mean, I'm assuming you'd call in or go online somehow and vote or whatever, you know, I'm not sure how the countdowns in each uh, territory works or whatever. Sure. Uh, same thing with like satellite radio. Um, I know Octane has their, uh, their Biggins countdown and I know you can go online and, and vote for whatever song you want uh, in regards to that um so yeah if if you have the means to vote or request a song please do so definitely and i will make sure our listeners do that as well to give you guys that much more hype and all that because it's such a fantastic song and it really um it really spoke to me given um everything that's happened in my personal life lately um long story short my dad uh, got diagnosed with cancer a couple weeks ago and uh and that song really spoke to me so thank you for again for the song and and for writing the song Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that, obviously. And um, yeah, I mean, it's the fact that uh, you got something out of the song that helped you along the way. I mean, that's that's just icing on the cake, you know? Absolutely. And and since I shared with you a song that's got me through lately, which happens to be Warrior by your band, Atreyu, what um, I'm actually working on a book as we speak is called Lighthouses in the Darkest Distance, how us in the music industry uh, get through the tumultuous times in our life. And uh, what are like a uh, couple songs that you consider to be a soundtrack to your life or an album or a band that you go to when times get difficult? Oh man. Um, well, <laughs> this is probably going to sound really weird, okay. but um, I'm a big fan of like very dark and depressing music. Oh, so uh, it's some reverse psychology there. Kind of. Yeah. Um, it's almost like the more miserable it makes me feel, the more I like it. And I don't know why that is. Um, I don't, maybe it's just because I, when I listen to certain, you know, darker songs or whatever, it's kind of comforting to know that somebody else out there feels like shit too. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I've always been like that, even like since I was a little kid, like, um, my favorite video like when i was literally like 10 or 11 years old was metallica's one video which is not the most uplifting video you'll right. ever see mm -hmm. um so um but i also do enjoy music that is more uplifting um there was a band uh in the late 90s called far out of uh sacramento and they're oh, uh, very second, nice second full-length album called water and solutions um i remember you know when i was younger um you know going through the normal stuff that every young man goes goes through you're confused you don't know what you want to do with your life uh your girlfriend just dumped you or whatever um i always found myself going to that album just to kind of pick my spirits up you know Definitely. And uh, so like um, in terms of writing, we'll get back to uh, the Baptized album. Um, was it um, what adjustments and what challenges did you and the band have to face given the COVID-19 pandemic? Did you guys like work in the same room or did you guys like get I've heard of some bands get like COVID tested or anything like that before they they um, laid down their tracks. Um, did you guys make any adjustments towards that? Um, well, with our situation, it was kind of w not weird, but we went into the studio and started writing and recording before uh, COVID hit. 
Okay. And and then we took a uh, a short break because we had a, a short tour booked in Australia. So we went over to Australia, and while we were in Australia, that that was kind of when people really started taking COVID very seriously. Mm-hmm. And so it was almost we were kind of wondering, you know, are we are we going to even be able to get home? Are we going to be stuck in Australia? Oh man! Um, but luckily, it didn't pan out like that. Um, I think like we got home early March of last year and that's and like shortly after that that's when everything started shutting down and all the lockdowns started happening um and if I remember correctly we were scheduled to go into the studio but um we kind of waited it out for a few weeks and just to kind of see like where everything was at because I mean this was at the time when you know nobody knew what the hell was going on or what to do what not to do how do we go about this? Mm-hmm. So we gave it some time and then um, we all decided that we all felt comfortable being in the same room with each other in semi close quarters. Um, and um, I think most of us had been tested at some point anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, you know, um, uh, kind of a saving grace. So yeah, eventually went back into the studio and then finished off the record and I've been sitting and waiting for uh, things to kind of mellow, mellow out a little bit, which obviously in the past few months, they kind of have been, uh, I think we're in a better, way better place than we were six, seven months ago. Oh, I agree. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, it all, it all worked out relatively well, all things considered. Definitely. And, and I'm so glad that it worked out in the end and, and things always work on the end that I've learned. And I'm curious, like with you and Dan Jacobs working on guitar tracks together, I am not a musician and I'm not going to claim to know any expertise on the guitar work. What are some tricks of the trade when you and Dan lay down the guitar tracks? Because I really have loved how you two inter- intertwine the guitar riffs and all that stuff. Uh, we don't have, like I said, process or a set routine as far as like writing and recording stuff um a lot of the time it's just a matter of who came up with the part is going to play it um a lot of the time it's me and dan um you know working parts out you know you play this and then i'll play this underneath it or vice versa um it's a very collaborative effort and then um sometimes it's the music kind of dictates who's going to play what, you know, there might be a certain part of a song where it's, um, you know, it'll be like, oh, okay, that's, that's definitely a Dan part, you know, he's going to play over that or, okay, this is, this has got Travis written all over it. Um, Because, you know, Dan and I as guitar players are, are very, very, very different. Um, Mm -hmm. Dan's much more of a straight up the middle, like, solid rock guy where I'm a little bit more left of center and I'm the one that kind of comes up with the weird stuff. Um, but even that being said, there's times where Dan comes up with something where I'm like, fuck, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> and there's parts where I, you know, I'll be playing something and somebody might assume it's Dan because it's very Dan like. Um, and we've been playing with each other for so long now that I think we've kind of like influenced each other and, you know, each other comes out in the other person's playing. Definitely. And that is so cool. So uh, considering your guitar work, what is one thing you feel you excel at and one thing you feel you need to work on in your, in your guitar work? Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a Jack of all, I wouldn't say Jack of all trades, but I'm, uh, you know, what's, I don't, I can't remember how the saying goes, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm the master of none. Like I'm, I know a little bit about everything, but I don't really excel in one particular area, but that's kind of the beauty of playing guitar or well, art and music or self-expression in general is that there is no real finish line. You know, you will never learn everything there is to know what, you know, whether it's music, you know, playing guitar, playing keyboard singing drums or painting or even you know like um 
something like martial arts, like nobody's ever, nobody's ever going to know every single little thing about whatever it is that they're trying to do, which kind of, you know, it's um, kind of, it makes it more, um, I don't even know how to, how to explain it. It's just, it's, it's cool to know that there's always something ahead of you. There's always something new to learn. Um, and there's some, there's always something you could teach somebody else, you know? Um, so yeah, it's, it'll, it's just an ongoing thing, you know, and it will be for however long that I'm doing music. Definitely. And let's say I come to your guitar session. Now I never play guitar. What's the first thing you're going to teach me? Ooh, well, tuning guitar, tuning a guitar is probably the first thing you should learn how to do because, you know, <laughs> playing in tune does help. Sounds good. Yeah. And, and I'll definitely take that advice if I ever decide to pick up a guitar. So uh, kind of a couple more things I want to talk about in terms of Baptize. Uh, Save Us is another fantastic track. And uh, take us into that song and that uh, music video. Uh, I'm trying to think back because my whole timeline is so fragmented and out of whack because of COVID. Oh, I get uh, it. But uh, if if I remember correctly, um, the artist called Grandson, uh, who's he's kind of like a like a more modern, almost like hip hop indie kind of artist. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, he actually came down to the studio um, with his writing partner and we collaborated with him for a few hours. And um, what came out of that was the song Save Us. Um, you know, we, for a, a while, we were kind of hesitant on bringing in um, other collaborators because I think we might have been, or I, I mean, I know I was like a little protective of, you know, letting people in our little circle that is a Treyu. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think once we all lightened up, we found out and we learned that it's oh, it's, it's always beneficial to have uh, an extra set of ears or an extra brain to kind of help with the process because, you know, you might come up with stuff that you probably normally would have never have come up with. And um, not to say that like when you have an outside writer coming in that they just take over and like, okay, I'm writing this, this, and this, and you guys play it, pay oh, me. Oh, for sure. You know, you know, it can be like literally just like, a short lyric or a short riff that acts as a springboard to, you know, venture off into new avenues and discover new ideas. Like I said, that you might not have thought about had you not had this outside person coming in to help. Um, so yeah, I think we, we definitely benefited from that. Absolutely. And, and uh, what have, um, next question I had is like, how would you define, um, let's say uh, it's all said and done, you quit making music at 35 years from now or whatever. Um, how, what do you want it trades legacy to be? I don't know. Uh, honestly, I, on, I don't really ever think that far ahead. Um, you know, when we, when we first started uh, acting, you know, first started as a full-time band, my assumption was that we, you know, get signed, record an album, maybe do a couple of tours, and then we go back to work. Um, it obviously didn't pan out like that. So um, my expectations were honestly pretty low because even at a young age, I was, I was a realist. Like even at a young age, I knew that quote unquote making it is you know is the chances of that happening are slim to none so i set the bar pretty low for myself <laughs> so um yeah i mean everything that's happened post all of that has just been icing on the cake so um you know i mean every band when they're young you know they want to take over the world and you know be the biggest thing ever which you know i mean that kind of goes without saying but um I honestly didn't think um, it would happen for us. Not to say that I thought that we weren't good enough. It was just that right. 
you know, stuff like that just doesn't happen to a guy like me. You know? <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, I, I, re- I can't complain, you know, I mean, there's been, you know, there's been bumps in the road, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's a matter of when all the bullshit is going to happen. So you learn how to deal with that and uh, you learn how to tour, you learn how this industry works. And um, yeah, uh, like I said, just that's no complaints really. And the fact that we get to do, we're, that we're still doing this and we still get to do it at this level, um, it's not lost on us at all. You know, we're, we're all very cognizant and aware of the fact that we're really damn lucky to still be doing this. And, um, you know, the fact, I mean, longevity, if anything, is what we strive for. And, you know, like we've, we've been doing this now for coming up on, I don't know if it's been 20 years or if it's about to be 20 years. Like I said, my, <laughs> my timeline is completely a, a mess, but, um, but yeah, I mean, if you told me in my early twenties that I'd still be doing this in my early forties, I probably would have laughed in your face. Uh, but here we are getting ready to release another album. So I'm stoked. Definitely. And speaking of releasing the other, the, this album baptized, are you guys going to do like a live stream event? Or are you guys going to try to tour with like social distancing guidelines in place? How is that going to work? We've actually been talking about that uh, over the, over these past few days. We're still kind of trying to figure it out um, because, you know, obviously everything is still up in the air. Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm about 99.99% sure we won't get to go overseas or anything um, this year anyway, hopefully 2022. Um, and we were kind of threw around the idea of doing another live stream of some sort. Um, but we will do something, whether it's a live stream, maybe we'll be able to play a live show. Uh, you know, albums released June 4th. So maybe by then things will be a little bit more cleared up. Who knows? You know, it's, it's all up in the air and you know, every band right now is trying to work through this, you know, Uh, there it's is kind of like, it's kind of like navigating through muddy waters, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Um, so yeah, like every band under the sun right now is trying to figure out their game plan. Um, but, uh, but yeah, once once all is said and done, uh, we're all going to be stoked to uh, get on a stage again. Yeah, definitely. And uh, what, uh, Travis, what what else would you like to add in regards to uh, regards to a tray you or anything like that? Sorry, I had a little brain cramp there. <laughs> no, no worries. Um, um, man, off the top of my head, I would just like to thank the fans. Uh, I know it's yeah, it's such a it's such a cli- uh, cliche thing to say, but it really is true. I mean, we would not be able to do this if it wasn't for the fans. We would not be where we are uh, if it wasn't for the fans. You know, um, they're the reason we go out on tour the reason why we're even active in the first place you know because if nobody's listening to listening to your music then you know why bother putting your blood sweat and tears into it yeah exactly and and i could speak in behalf on the fans uh, your uh Trader's music has helped a lot of people myself included so thank you again for the music you make and for all you do no thank, no, thank you for the for the kind words that means a lot yeah, absolutely. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time to interview with me for Madness to Creation Podcast, where self-care and music merge. And